welcome to the ultimate guide to pricing, three ways to save time and make more money with me, Marley Major, and Angela Prophet. And Angela, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me okay? I can, yes. Okay, so if you guys can hear, now put your hands down. Let's We'll, we'll do a little practice, like getting ready for the webinar here with questions and all that stuff. So if you can hear Angela, raise your hand. Yay. Okay, this is awesome. Here we go. Okay, so here's the point of all this. Angela and I really want to help you stop cutting your expenses, stop cutting your prices without spending a ton of time, okay? Because what happens is we all get in this race to the bottom mentality, which is no good for anybody. And uh, raise your hand if you feel good about raising, about cutting your prices. Hopefully no hands are going up. Okay, good. Raise your hand if you feel good about raising your prices, like right after this call. <laughs> I love it. Okay, that's good. Okay, so now I can see that everything's working because I've got a few people who are raising their hands like in one second. Okay, so this is good. All right, so we're on the right page. So Angela and I came up with a couple goals that we wanted to co cover in this webinar. And, and basically, we wanted to make sure that we got you off the hamster wheel. I don't even feel like you're on the hamster wheel. I feel like even today I was on the hamster wheel. But the idea is that you want to have energy so you're not run down, you're not depressed, you're not like just why am I starting this business, okay, I hate this, blah, blah, blah. So we want to get you organized so that you feel great, okay? When you feel great and when you know how to price, you feel confident. When you feel confident, guess what? You don't start second guessing yourself and wondering, oh my gosh, you know, they told me I should be less or they told me to cut $500 off my rates. Maybe I should. Forget that. But here's the, the trick is that you actually have to know and be able to justify your pricing, which is what we're going to go over today. Okay, so we're going to get organized and we're going to just really start nailing your pricing. Okay, now one thing is, if you stay to the end, we are going to make sure that we tell you exactly how to nail it, and I want you to know that we're also having time at the end for questions, okay? So if you're sitting there going, oh my gosh, I've got questions, we, can, we are going to take time at the end for questions. So rest assured, we can cover the material. You can also put the questions in the chat. Okay, so what makes this webinar different? Angela, why don't you jump in and tell us what makes this webinar different and most importantly, what makes the two of us different? Because I think that so many people have been on webinars and they are completely jaded as far as, oh, I'm not really going to learn anything, this is going to be a waste of time, et cetera, et cetera. So what, what makes you different in teaching this material? I think the main thing in making me different is I came from corporate America. I went to college to get a degree in psychology. I worked in mental health. I worked in healthcare for nine years. And I ran on that hamster wheel, but I also ran an event planning company at the same time and lived two lives and was finally able to figure out years ago how to be profitable, how to charge correctly so that I could step away from corporate America and really do my own thing. And so I've become a certified communication expert and facilitator, and I'm very productive because we're paperless. I learned that for multiple reasons, and I helped implement EMR for the healthcare system, which is electronic medical records. And then I really understood how to communicate with people, especially working in a morgue and with the mentally ill. And I understand how to price now after going to classes and having mentors, so I feel like I bring a lot to the table, and what makes us unique is we're both on the same page in terms of in order to have a business and make sure that it's productive, you have to be profitable, or you're like a hamster running on that wheel. Exactly, and the thing is, is that I think that also what makes us different, and, and I'm going to jump into this, is that like what makes it different, I think, is that both of us are educated both of us run their own companies I mean I had my first when I was 22 and my my goal good or bad was to have this million dollar company but the problem was is that it was a million dollars in sales without figuring out yeah you've got to take some of that home so you can have a million dollars in sales and it can cost you 
you know, a million point three in expenses, guess what? You just went in the wrong direction. And so I think the other piece about what makes this difference is, is that, you know, you and I have done it wrong. And not only, what, I think what really makes a difference is not only have we done it wrong, but we're willing to say that we did it wrong, we did it wrong for a really long time. And we don't want anybody else to make the same mistake. We want like as many people as we possibly can get to drink the Kool-Aid. We want to because we don't want you guys to, to struggle like we did because it's kind of an unfortunate, lonely place. So the other thing that, that, that I think makes a difference is, is that at the end of the day, I wrote a book about pricing to solve not only my own problems, but to help other people solve their problems. So I think that both of us are pretty much certified to, to be able to talk about, about pricing and, and really how, how to fix it. So jump in a little bit more, Angela, on your piece here. So I went to UT Knoxville and graduated and thought I would work in healthcare and have this great education. My parents paid for me to go to school. And after six months of it, I'm like, I hate this, but I love decorating and planning. And so I did it for just really for fun. And that's how a lot of people in our industry get started because they're doing it for fun. And a lot of entrepreneurs, not just in the event industry, when I'm working with them and coaching them and ask them, how did you get into this? They all, most of them say, well, it was an accident or it was passed down to me. I have no idea what I'm doing. And so what helped me after about doing it for fun for about two years Things started to grow through word of mouth, and I started to get bigger and better and traveling. So getting a business license and getting insurance was really important. And then after that, I started to join a few professional networking organizations and started meeting other professional people who really did this for a living. And then I really learned how to customize the message based on the personality of my clients as well as my vendors as well as my team members. And so that's where the communication part comes in that I, I don't try to talk behind people's backs or figure out what they're thinking. You know, I'm very direct and very patient and very calm and try to make sure what I'm communicating to you is the way that you need to hear it so that we're on the same page. And that's and I love, it, it makes a huge difference. And the, the other piece that, which is going to tie directly to, to one of our tips is is really it's about semantics. I mean, when you're talking about customizing the message so people hear it, that's a lot of you know that's a lot of how pricing is, right? So, for example, if I say, um, "Hey, listen, this this dress is going to cost four hundred dollars," and you might think it's great, and okay, fine, you'll pay four hundred dollars. But if I say, "Hey, by the way, the dress is going to cost three hundred twenty dollars, and then the buttons are going to cost twenty five, and then the zipper is going to cost this, and then and there's this whole laundry list of stuff." What's going to happen? You're just going to get annoyed. So pricing is is not so much about well, it is about what the market will bear and what you can charge, but it's about how you present it. And so I think that's what we're also going to cover. Now the other thing is I I did do a lot of things right. Is obviously graduated from a top school, spent a lot of time learning about business, wrote a book, and you know had three kids in the process. So the other piece is that. I think that that's kind of makes us different is that we really can meet people where they are. So it isn't like you and I are just running around like doing webinars and then hanging out on the beach. You know, it's like I've been the single mom. Well, actually, I am right now, now that I think about it, since I haven't, I don't have a new husband. Uh, and that goes to the whole like been married four times. Um, but it's it's a piece of I can I can relate to where you are and I know what it's like to be pulled in five million directions at any given time. I mean, even when it's time to, let's say, do a webinar. So both of us are really, this day, like living and breathing. Now, what would you say, Angela, are some of the things that, that you did wrong? Because I, I just want to make sure that everybody gets that we know what they're talking about. Yeah. Well, the main thing is whenever I started thinking about pricing, you know, I again, I did this for fun. So I was like, I'll plan an event for $500 with no rhyme or reason to it. And as I started to get busier and busier, and then I really needed to focus and pick one, and then I picked, okay, let me do my own business. The worst that can happen is I can always go back to corporate America, but I didn't understand how important my time was. 
and I had a couple mentors around me for years that kept saying, how do you make any money? Like, how do you come with your numbers? I'm like, well, I just do packages because that's what everybody else does. And they're like, no, no, no. you got to track your time and know what you're doing is efficient, what's your overhead. And so finally, a few years ago, when my accountant looked at me and said, you paid people to do their events this year because you didn't price right. And it was like, in the you know, a punch in the gut. So I pretty much, you know, I listened and I woke up and I started to become a businesswoman instead of just a fun event planner. And well, so not that, tracking go on. Yeah, so not tracking my time and then also not having a process. I would allow clients to control me and tell me what they wanted, which now we have templates, we have a strategy, we have a process, and when I meet with people I say this is the way that we work. And we're paperless, and, and this is how it is. And if you don't like it, I'm sorry, we're not for you. So not having a process. And then, you know, I hired my friends and my family because I just needed sets of hands to help me. And I really didn't implement a strategy of hiring the right people for their natural talents. So I learned that the hard way, too. <laughs> well, and the other thing, too, is I think so many of us have done that is, we have a need and it feels like an emergency so we just say oh my gosh you know any warm body is is better than than nothing and i think that's about that's a big piece because people on this call are probably wanting to take their businesses to the next level and in, in fact raise your hand if you if that's something that that you want to do is to get your business to the next level and figure out how because when we've done surveys over and over and over it comes to hey, listen, how do I get my business to the next level? And one of the ways you do this is you get on things like this and, and realize you didn't have all the skills you needed to start your business because we usually start, especially women, we start out of passion. We don't start out of, uh, you know, tons of business knowledge. And even though I had a lot of business knowledge, I still blew it. So part of taking your business to the next level is, you know, no longer hiring your friends, <laughs> sorry, and really coming up with a system. And I think it all boils down to a system, literally a system for, for every aspect of your life. So I did a million things wrong. If you follow me on Twitter or Facebook or anything, you will hear about them all the time. But I was focused on sales instead of profit, even though I knew how to, what a profit was and how to get there. I couldn't seem to make the decision, let's say, to fire my friend because I felt guilty and they weren't producing enough based on how much I was paying them. The other thing is I didn't have this system of pricing for profit and that's really what we're going to talk a lot about today is kind of like this recipe and when you have a recipe so that when the client calls and they say hi and let's say you're an event planner you say okay listen what's your date and what's your budget and you have all these pre-qualifying questions and then if you're an interior designer, like I just left a, a meeting right now at one of our construction projects, and it's the same kind of stuff. Hey, listen, when does the building need to be done? What do you want us to do versus what are you going to handle? It was like all about getting the scope of the project. So when you get the scope and you have a recipe, then it, all it is really is it's like Mad Libs. I mean, it's kind of like just filling in the blanks. Um, me doing a lot of things wrong, too, is it doesn't help to try to grow your business when you're getting married every 10 minutes. Uh, which is what I was doing. And after, I think the two of us, we both have something in common, which is we reinvented the wheel for every single proposal. And I was just at the special event last week, Angela, and, and shared this with you, and I know you've seen it over and over, is it's like when the phone rings, it amazes me. It's, it's almost like, oh, whoops, like somebody's calling asking me how to price. Well, we're asking me for a proposal, and we start from scratch every single time. Well, we shouldn't because they're what, what the idea is to identify those key things that are repetitive, that are part of the process that we can say, okay, if let's say for if it's a construction project, all right, every time I know I'm going to spend an hour and a half with the client on the first meeting, or the... I'm going to get off the phone with them, and then I'm going to spend two hours doing research and preparing a proposal. You know, it's, it's really drilling down on how much time it's going to take. And the other thing is, is that every, I think we've both, like you mentioned, the $500 event, we've both worked with every client or, or felt like we had to work with every client that called, like it was going to be our last. Like, oh, my God, if I don't 
make this very square peg fit into a round hole, I'm never going to get, you know, hired or I'm never going to have any money coming in the door. And in reality, pricing and business is very much about saying no, like no, it's not a fit because you've just sort of put them through your little pricing recipe and you've realized, yeah, there's no way I can I can make any money with this. And and then taking chances on vendors that aren't proven and then guess what? That's a huge waste of time. So what would you what would you say to us about that? Because you're really good at like make kind of like making the match, whether it's the message matching or making sure that the person is the match. Yeah. I mean again, like having a process and a strategy in place and being very confident about it will make you more productive. And so for instance we pre-screen everyone through our intake form. For instance, over the past few years, since Pinterest is so big now, we ask for their Pinterest ID. And when I go onto their Pinterest, I can immediately tell what kind of person they are. For example, if there's 13 folders and they're organized and they have a, a flower picture, a flower folder and a, a dog folder, and you know that tells me they're type A, I need to make sure that I'm early because they're probably going to be early. If I say I'm going to have you a proposal, by 8 a.m. the next morning, I better do it or I'll never earn their trust. And then the other type of client is I get onto their Pinterest and they have 3,563 pictures and they, are, they have no rhyme or reason, which that person thinks a completely different way. So they're probably going to be late. They're probably going to get lost the first time they come to my office and that's okay. But I almost know what to expect just by looking for a pattern in people's behaviors which keeps me very productive. And then we use the same proposal for everyone. I don't do custom proposals anymore. I tell people we have to have at least 40 hours to plan your event. It, it, that's a minimum in order for me to be your eyes and ears on the most important day of your life if it's a wedding. And day of or week of doesn't exist in my opinion because if I don't know you, I can't carry out your expectation and I'm setting myself up for failure. So I give people a minimum and a starting point, and as long as they're comfortable with that, usually after we surpass those 40 hours, which it happens a lot, they already trust me, and they know that their money is being managed and spent in a very trustworthy manner. Well, and the other thing I think that's that's important, because there are, you know, this call, they're not just event planners on the call, the fact that this pricing and this plan goes for everybody. So with certain people, I mean, even if you call, uh, even if you're a new patient calling a doctor's office, you know, and I have a, a ton of experience with that having consulted, consulted for many doctors in the past about, about their business models. And if somebody, if a patient calls, it's like, I mean, what, what are some of the first things you do? You ask what kind of insurance they have and, and you, you go through this whole list because if, if they have no means of paying or they have no insurance that you cover, it becomes a, a huge waste of time for everybody, right? And I think so many times we do it backwards. We spend all the time giving the client the proposal or preparing something. And then instead, we, have, we should have said, hey, listen, we need to weed out a lot more people. And, and I think maybe that's part of the secret is that there are a lot more people that we need to weed out than we think. And if everybody that's calling or 50 percent of people that are calling feel like a match, unless we're doing an insanely fabulous job with our marketing, something is probably something's probably wrong. So I think that that you and I kind of have done it the hard way, which is trial and error. And the the, the thing that we're trying to get you not to do is don't do it via trial and error because we know already what won't work. So let's eliminate some of those things and let's do some of the the easy things. Um, the hard way is kind of as Angela as we as we put it out there is that you don't have a start to finish system for working with a client. So one tip, in addition to what Angela said, I lo I love the the Pinterest tip, is part of your system has to be a strong intake process. And I think that the tip is great to check out Pinterest if you're in at all kind of field where somebody's visual. The other thing too is to get, you know, is even if you just Google them and check out their Twitter and check out their Facebook, not like you're a prospective employer hiring them, but but you are seeing if this is a match because remember you are going to be spending a huge chunk of time 
with these people, most likely. And the other thing you're doing wrong is treating every client like it's unique. Now, every client is unique, but they're but see the word totally unique. And I think what we mean by that is that every client you have to goes back to having that recipe. So even if a chef bakes a cake, he doesn't teach himself how to bake a cake like totally different from the way he did it before. He has a method. And so what we're trying to do with this is help you guys create your method. And the next thing is, is ditch the fact of feeling badly if it isn't a fit. I can't tell you how many calls I have uh, where somebody called me and said, hey, how much do you, this was even a couple days ago, somebody said, hey, how much would you charge to do this, to coordinate something? And I immediately said, well, it totally depends. And that they wanted a quick answer. They were very impatient. And, and oh, well, that's too bad. I mean, they can, I can talk to them at a more convenient time, but I can't just toss out a number that isn't going to be based on anything. But when I asked them and started gathering more information, I immediately knew it wasn't going to be a fit. Even though so many clients, when you say, what's your budget? And they'll say, oh, I don't have a budget, or I don't know. I mean, that's every industry. It's like the same kind of thing, because people feel like they don't want to say some, a price, and then you're going to just run, you know, run their credit card. So you get the information another way. So just because Angela said, like, hey, listen, she's not going to say, are you psycho-organized, but she can figure that out on Pinterest. So I could figure out, even if they weren't going to tell me a budget, they could figure out if they were a client based on the total budget of their event. So when I said, well, how much are you thinking, you know, for your coordination piece, and they had no idea, but then I said, okay, what's the total budget for your event? And it was, I don't know, 150 or something it was some insanely low number I immediately knew it was a pass because and I did the same thing with the bride a week and a half ago and I really liked her by the way like we had really good chemistry and I would have loved to work with her but it never would have worked because too much of my fee would have been her her entire budget so it's kind of like ferreting all that out sooner so it's doing more work on the front end and less work on the back end. So we are going to tell you the easy way. So Angela, tell us about in the past what happened and now what we do. <laughs> well, in the past, again, I did not track my time and I let clients dictate how I was going to plan their events and I don't do that anymore. Now I have a template for everything. I use multiple softwares, Dropbox and Google Drive, are amazing. I share a Dropbox with every client. I share the templates with my clients through Google Drive and it's cut our emails down by hundreds a day by answering the same question over and over and over, which I think that's the definition of insanity and wanting right. a different result. So now having the templates and tracking our time and also the most important thing is managing the expectation of the client and letting them know your process up front. Right, and, and that's a great uh, tip that I heard from a terrific business consultant who does a lot of consulting with creatives and one of the things he said is you really walk your client through the contract because at the beginning you're all friends and so you walk them through the, the contract and, and the plan sort of how it's going to go. A, because we always feel com more comfortable when we know what's coming next, right? Like It's like if you've ever done any of those team building exercises where you know, you, they say close your eyes and fall back and you have to have this level of trust. Well, with clients it's the same thing. We're saying give, them, give us your credit card or, or write this deposit check. They have to feel comfortable with you. And people feel much more comfortable when you kind of guide them through the process, like, you know, kind of like what we're trying to do right now with the pricing piece. Now, we have to make sure that we tell you that anything that we're going over right now is not typical as far as the results go and that we're not promising a certain outcome because we obviously don't know if you're going to get off this call and actually do your homework. But, okay, so we promised that we would cover three ways to save time and make more money in terms of coming up with this ultimate pricing guide. So the three ways we're going to do this in a bonus one are we're going to raise your prices without raising them or without your clients even noticing. We are going to show you how to get a lot more efficient. We kind of have been already showing you that. And we're going to cut your expenses so that you don't feel it. Because one of my big things is anytime anybody would tell me, 
no, you've got to save money. I'd be like, oh, God, boring, horrible. So we want to make sure that you can cut your expenses and without totally feeling the pinch. And then we're going to keep showing you how we can help you implement the changes that we're making on this. So let's go over the three ultimate ways. So raising your prices without raising them. This is something that I've talked a lot about and Angela really started the conversation off by saying it's, it's, it's so much how you communicate to people and how you say sort of like how you feed the dog the pill a little bit. Like how do you communicate what it is you charge? And uh, for those of you who have followed me in the past, I've given an airline example and just quickly and then I'll give you a different one. But when the airlines, everybody cut their fares and you could now price compare on the internet, what happened? Everybody had to be pretty much at the same price if you wanted to, to fly from Los Angeles, let's say, to New York. And if you weren't, well, guess what? All the other airlines would get booked and you wouldn't because everybody could look at the difference right there in front of their faces. And so what the airlines did was they said, fine, we'll all be the same prices, like on the face value. But if you want to eat on the plane, well, you're going to have to pay this. And if you want baggage fees, if, I mean, if you want to take on more than one bag, you're going to have to pay this. So what did it do? It, it brought in for the airlines three and a quarter billion dollars. So our first secret for you guys is to figure out your own method of what the airlines did, how to raise those prices without really raising them. And I just, this is literally not even a week ago, read an article, I think it was in the Wall Street Journal. And a, a big way that I learn and refine my pricing and my sales is by reading and reading really good stuff and reading what my target audience reads. Why is that important? Because if I'm reading what my target audience reads, then I'm sort of reinforcing the messages that they're already seeing in part of their daily lives. So, so part of my audience definitely reads the Wall Street Journal. And I'm pretty sure this is where the article was. And what it talked about is it, it, the headline was something along the lines of, you know, don't call it a, whatever you do, don't call it a resort fee. And I was like, well, this is kind of interesting. What do they mean? Well, if you check into certain hotels, you'll check in and they'll, they have a resort fee. And, you know, so I'm making this up, but let's say $35 or $25. And that'll give you access to the gym and access to the pool and whatever. But you got to pay the resort fee. So what has happened to hotels? Very similar to what's happened to the airlines. You can now get on a hotel's website or you can go to Expedia or you can go to Hotwire. Well, Hotwire won't tell you which hotel you're booking. But you, there are a million different ways for you to price compare for hotels. So what happens? They have to be competitively priced in, for, for their grouping. So what did they do? A certain group of hotels, which I think is genius, and this is exactly what you guys should do, is they said, we're not going to call it a resort fee. We're going to create a club fee. And they listen to their customers, which is huge for pricing and huge for communicating your pricing. And they knew that they got a lot of backlash when they, when the hotels um, charged for the internet. Customers said, hey, listen, that's annoying. We're already paying whatever it is a night. We want free internet. So they said, fine, we're going to have a club fee. For the club fee, you get a continental breakfast, you get free internet, and you get, you know, all you can eat happy hour or something or breakfast. So what did they do? They gave high value stuff to the customer. High value meaning, hey, this is great. I don't have to pay for my internet. I can go downstairs and get all the wine I want. Um, I can use the gym. I'm not going to be nickel and dime. But then guess what? What happens? Well, customers don't always go to use the gym, right? Like I just paid one of these fees last week and I was sick the whole week. Well, I couldn't use it. And let me tell you, they were not going to refund my daily amount. Um, but it was high value to the customer. How much does internet cost a hotel? Not very much. But if the customer's like, yeah, I'll pay that small fee and get a ton of stuff included, awesome. That's what they do. And, and this is genius because it provides a jumping off point. A key thing in pricing is, 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 is you probably have heard like Gillette with the razors. 
what they'll do is sometimes businesses will have what's called a loss leader where they will actually create something, create a product that it, it might cost them money to actually sell it, which is how I used to run my whole business. But they create a product that might cost them money, but they know once they get you as a customer, it'll sort of boomerang and you'll spend a ton more. And, and I want to toss this to Angela because, Angela, I think you have a genius way, genius, 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 um, with your whole deal of, of package pricing when it comes to brides. And, in fact, I, I tweaked something of, of how I sell thanks to the tip from Angela and literally closed a bride. Uh, and I said it pretty much how Angela told me to say it, and it made all the difference in the world. So Angela, jump in with how you charge your your clients, but how you end up making so much more at the end. Well, again, I mean, tracking your time is all the way down from meetings to phone calls to behind the scenes work, which again, you managing the expectation of the client is so important. I tell them behind the scenes there's hours spent on timelines and shopping and revising quotes and floor plans and I paint a very vivid picture for them of things that we are going to completely take care of them because these people they don't want to do it nor do they know how to do it and it just stresses them out. So I give them a list of everything verbally that we're going to do and then as I'm verbally saying it, I show them on our screen in the office or sometimes I'm on FaceTime sharing my screen with them. Um, I'm visually showing them the organizational templates so they're hearing what I'm saying and they're visually seeing how we stay organized. And then usually they immediately after listening to me, they see that we have a strategy and we have a process and they feel comfortable. So when I tell them, you know, yes, we it, it's a $2,500 retainer to retain our services and once you exceed your, your, your first amount of hours, then we bill the first of every month. And some people will come back and say, oh, you're like an attorney. I'm like, no, we're not like an attorney at all. However, we value our time and we only want to focus on our clients who understand that time is very valuable. And I tried to ask them, you know, what do you do? And recently I had a dentist. And I said, well, so you run your own practice, so you have to pay your rent, you have to get toothpaste, you have to keep up all your equipment, you have to pay your people. Well, I run a business too, and I have to do the same thing. And so I have to make sure that every event that we take on is profitable and it's efficient. And the the thing that I loved is, and I, and I won't get into the to the nitty gritty of of the pricing of it, but we, I mean, you and I both have very 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 wealthy clients, and we have clients that really aren't wealthy at all. They just are, you know, don't want to deal with planning a party, and they're willing to pay for it. And what I've noticed, whether you have two tons of money or not very much, is even if you have two tons of money, you don't necessarily want to spend it. <laughs> and so a lot of ways that people have, have made money in the first place is because they're they're good with it. They are they're doing things like you guys are doing, which is listening to calls like these and, and figuring out strategies. And one of the things that I've noticed is people always want something to be cheaper if they can. I mean, why wouldn't you, right? And the genius thing I think about about Angela, how you price is You've thought through all the steps to your process from the time the person calls till the time you, you know, send the final invoice after the party is all cleaned up. And what you've done is you've said, if I do this amount for you, and, and I'm going to oversimplify it, but basically it's sort of like you've broken it out kind of into three separate days of, of meetings and pre-planning, and then actually working the wedding and that's sort of like the equivalent of the one night hotel stay or the flying from Los Angeles to New York. For this price we will get you from here to here and then from there once you're you know happy on the plane or happy at the hotel you're gonna want to drink more of the Kool-Aid. So what do you do? Then you sign up for more. So in Angela's process she 
as a very fair rate for what she charges her clients. And it's it's in, in one case, it's a it's a very simple, straightforward, you get this, you don't get this, you get this, you don't get that. So it makes her very efficient. It makes her very professional and businesslike. And then once they're working with her, if they'd like more, great, you're available to do it. But it's it's a little bit like that loss leader deal of that the you know Gillette selling the razors. Hey, if we sell the if we give them the base of the razor for basically at our cost, and then what we really want to make money is those disposable blades. Because once they get used to using those disposable blades, they're not going to want to give that up. That's where they make their money. So a, a great example is is like Angela, like you start out with here's your base package, totally competitive with, with everybody else out there. In fact, a great value. But then what happens? If they want more, they can get more, but it's going to cost them, but they're already happy and they're already your customer. So because it, it becomes a win-win situation, but you don't lose the customer from the very beginning because you're too expensive. So I think it's just a really, really great strategy. And is there anything else you would want to jump in with that about tips or tricks? Because it's, see, you didn't raise your prices. At the end of the day, you got a lot more money per client and that's what it's all about. So I will say that you know the first seven years I was doing this, I and I and I vividly remember the number when I started to pay attention. We did over a hundred events a year, and then when the first year that I actually started tracking, we cut that in half and made double the money by tracking time. So it was very very powerful for me to see work smarter, not harder, and take the right kind of clients and don't say yes to everyone. Exactly, and and it goes back to having the confidence of saying no because you're not saying no and then thinking, oh gosh, maybe I could have made it work out. No, you can't. It co it takes a certain amount of time and money to produce your product or your service. So let's jump to kind of this summary piece uh, because at the end of the day, raising your prices it boils down to setting your goal, and this is the basically the net net. If you're on this call, you've got to ask yourself, kind of as your home piece when you get off, do you want to work more and make the same amount of money? Do you want to work the same and make more? Or do you want to work less and make more? That's super important because then that brings you to, if you want to work more and make the same, well, obviously nobody wants to do that, right? I mean, maybe me. I just like evidently to work. but if your goal is to work less and make more, and, and I think that always should be your goal, right? Because if you're striving for that, then what happens? You're, you're, you can then have all the free time you want. To me, that is that is luxury, is being able to spend your time in the way you want it, meaning you can spend more time working if you feel like it. Um, but the, the concept is that if it takes 100 hours to, to manage an event or handle a, an interior design client or 10 hours to be a personal shopper for somebody. The point is, is if, if, you, if you're making $1,000 and it takes 100 hours, let's say you've already taken out all your expenses, you're making $10 an hour. And in my case, when I did this exercise, I was making $5 an hour. But when you, how you double your rate, even if you don't charge hourly, is you cut the amount of time you spend. Right, so if if, it, if you can take what we're teaching you and systematize it down, which is, is to doesn't take 100 hours. Now it's only taking 50. Guess what? You just gave yourself an instant raise. And the last um, kind of little example I'll give is another just semantics of how you can raise your prices without actually raising them. Is I just booked a uh, a hotel on Hotwire. I love Hotwire, and it was like, okay, sure enough, I booked the hotel, I got it, okay, here's your hotel, perfect. And they honored the rate, but then they said, and, and I was booking for an adult, two rooms for two adults and two kids. And so they said, hey, listen, we're going to guarantee that you're going to have the two rooms and it'll have space for those people. However, if you want to dictate the size of the beds, you're going to pay more. You're going to pay this if you say this size of bed, this if you say this size of the bed. 
Well, at first it might seem ridiculous, but then guess what? It's really just another option for the consumer to customize. And I think that's a trend that we're both seeing more and more and more in every market is the customer wants to feel like they're the only ones and, and to have everything customized. And the way to do that is you give them a customized proposal, but that's based on your on your recipe. So let's jump to secret number two. And Angela, this is your sweet spot. So how do we get more efficient? Well, the first thing I would say is plan ahead if you can before you meet with clients. Again, I try to capture as much information from them in my intake form and learn a little bit about them ahead of time so that I can plan ahead before our meetings. And then I have a lot of help. I hire people that enjoy doing the things that I hate. So delegating is a huge thing. We use Wonderlist. It's a free application that everyone has on their phone. So I don't have to worry about, did that get done? Did that get done? I share a list with all of my team members and assign a due date so that we're very efficient with that. You know, Again, hiring the right people and making sure that you're using people for their strengths and not focusing on their weaknesses and how you can make them better because if you're trying to change someone and that's not their natural knack, they're going to be miserable and you're going to be miserable. And then communication, you know, I mentioned, I mentioned Wonderlist, it's a great delegation tool and then again using Dropbox and Google Drive and uh, all these things are free. and. Right. I mean, if you really start to use Dropbox a lot, eventually you'll want to pay for it, but it's worth the $200 a year to make sure that everything is backed up. And again, having the advantage to share things with my clients is great. And then again, stop wasting time with the wrong clients and try to pre-qualify them before you spend all that time to only get an answer back of, oh, I, I can't afford this, or this isn't what I was looking for. Right, and, it, and I think based on any of the tips you, you, you gave, and I want to give a specific example because we want to make sure that people get as much actionable advice, kind of goes back to the whole piece of what makes these webinars different that we do versus everybody else, is that we want to make sure you have like a list of good stuff that you can apply the second you get off this webinar. And um, Angela, give the example of, of like when we talk about batching your tasks, this I think was genius and I copied it and did it as or set it up to do it as well which was you batched your tasks when it came to photo shoots so give tell us that example and tell us how much money you saved by doing that one thing yeah so for example my branding manager wanted me to come up with an annual plan for this year on what we're gonna market to our clients and what we're going to market to our coaching clients and let them know how we can help them. And so and he was saying, oh, you can do it once a month, the first of every month, which means getting hair, makeup, a stylist, a studio, a photographer, a videographer to do behind the scenes. So it's a lot of people, a lot of schedules, which I have to pay for that stuff. And so instead, I took it a step further and, and thought to myself, well, gosh, if I just organize it, do a storyboard, I use iBook Author, it's a free application on my Mac, I'll put a storyboard together, he helps me do it, we, we banged it out for the entire year in one day. So yeah. yes, outfits, and, and, and had all my scripts down and, and pre-planned, but instead of spending $20,000 and paying thousands of dollars the first of every month, I was able to do it for under $5,000 and that was our marketing plan for the entire year. So again, going back to planning ahead and, and spending a day to work on your business instead of in your business is so, 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 so important. Yep, and it's, it's just, it's like that was a $15,000 decision right there and there are so many things, so many ways in our businesses that we can each do that and, and a lot of times when we think of saving time we don't realize you know that that dumb adage of like time is money that like our grandparents used to say or our parents but it's true and so that's when you're when you're your own business owner if you work 40 hours a week and you save yourself 20 guess what you just doubled your money literally you doubled your rates because you're now spending half the time to make the same amount of money and Forget about the fact that it cost you twenty thousand. It would have cost you twenty thousand dollars, and you only spent five thousand. You save fifteen grand. But let's talk about the headache and all the potential mistakes 
that could have happened on all those photo shoots as soon as you had them on multiple days. So let's jump to number three, which is slashing your expenses without even noticing. And Angela, jump in on this one because you said it and called it and nailed it, and I was like, oh my gosh, you're so right. So what's the first point? Well, I'm shocked at how many entrepreneurs that I meet with, and I ask them, for example, how much do you want to spend marketing and how much are your expenses for your overhead? For instance, just this week I've done two venue tours of two builders reaching out to me asking us to consult to build a new venue. And so I'm asking them, what's your overhead? How much is this? How much is that? And they just look at me and say, I don't know. I don't know. What's the industry standard? Well, it's different for every venue. So I'm shocked at how people want to jump into a project not knowing what things cost or how much they want to spend. So that, that's one thing. Um, and then knowing how to delegate those tasks. So for example, when the builders were asking me, well, how much do you cost for consulting? And I'll say, well, we have a checklist of everything that you can delegate to us and spend X amount of dollars to hire me for a week and me and my team can knock it out for you and do everything for you. So it's very, very, it's a very good use of our time and you don't have to do all the market research or waste time hiring someone that may not know the industry like we do. And in the long run, it's going to save you money because it gets done in a week instead of prolonging your project into four, five, or six months and you have a marketing plan in place for your venue that's not even ready yet. Well, and it also goes to, it's the same thing, like you're effectively batching your tasks for your client. So it's kind of like instead of you being inefficient, it's like you probably do like what I do, which is, you know, you place all your rental orders at the same time, you place all your floral orders, you place all of your, you know, whatever it is you have to do, and that becomes more efficient for the client. You can say you save the client money then you're providing better service and again you've just given yourself a raise because at the end of the day even a massage therapist all of us have you know an hourly rate and I, I love your genius idea of um, when we talked last night about about uber um, oh, yeah. so I wanted to I wanted to toss this in because this is like a great real-life example of super fast how you can cut your expenses which seems like we're not because we're going to say hey go ahead and take that ten dollar uber ride and you're you guys are going to be like i thought you told us you're going to tell us how to save money on this webinar and said you're telling us how to spend it but what we're trying to do is is have you compare your rate if you want to charge a hundred dollars an hour or a thousand or fifty dollars an hour what do you do the first thing you do is delegate something that you can hire somebody to do for less so tell us your uber story well, so for example, I've been traveling a lot lately, um, doing some projects in Los Angeles, and the traffic is horrific, and to go two miles, it might take 35 minutes. And so in going from venue to venue, from meeting to meeting, instead of me sitting in traffic for hours, which makes me go crazy, I decided to start taking Uber rides that literally cost me $10, and I just sit in the car and work on my computer because I have internet. I use my hotspot on my phone. So I get so much done working while someone else is driving and sitting in traffic and doing it the safe way. And so I get things done for a $10 Uber ride. It's just such a better use of time. Exactly. And so the, the, the big tip here with slashing your expenses is, you know, you've heard the whole thing of sometimes you have to spend money to make money. Well, in this case, it's like you spend $10 so that you can work for an hour. Well, if your hourly rate is 100 bucks and you can bill a client $100, guess what? We just told you how to make 90 bucks by having Uber drive, you know? Absolutely. So, and then outsourcing, I put like dogs and groceries, like anything that you possibly can, if you can get somebody to deliver, you know, shop online, whatever, so that you can then turn around and spend your time on the on your highest level of activities. That's how you make more in your businesses. Now, let's like put it kind of the whole bonus thing of, of putting it all together. And how we're going to put it together is we're going to give you a couple of examples uh, of, of people, and some of them are ourselves, that we've worked with in the past that 
like where they would make mistakes because there's a ton of data that says um, how if you can you we learn basically through case studies and if we can tell you a story and you can see yourself in the story then it's it's much easier to fix the problem for yourself so we're going to walk you through a couple of those stories so that it will kind of tie all of these of these pieces together that we're that we're teaching you today so jump in on um, these first three mistakes well, mistake one, allowing distractions, we don't do that anymore after attending many conferences and listening to other entrepreneurs' tips. We schedule everything. I schedule every phone call, every meeting, when I go to the gym, everything is scheduled because if I'm working on a budget, for instance, for a client and people are texting me and calling me and my email inbox keeps clicking and dinging, I can't. I can't focus and so to cut off the distractions and become more effective and efficient and turn the notifications off on all of your devices and look at them once a day or maybe twice a day maybe check email twice a day and set a timer mistake two is again not clarifying the expectations to your clients it is a huge mistake that I used to make not letting them know our process so now I communicate to them and tell them you really need me for four things. Other than that, behind the scenes, my assistant takes care of schedules and emails and, and again, we try to schedule everything so that we're very efficient. And again, because we charge hourly, they really appreciate that. And then wasting time in meetings with clients and vendors that aren't the right fit for me and we're not on the same page. So pre-qualifying is so, so, so important. And it's really easy to do that on your intake form through your website and some of the girls I coach they're like I don't have an assistant I don't have anybody but there are a few key things that you can do such as asking pre-qualifying questions on your intake form to weed people out I love that and the other thing is is just like wasting your time just in general like I'm amazed at how many times somebody with whom I work and they'll be like oh yeah well, I'm having a meeting with this potential new vendor I'm like why why would you have lunch with somebody I, I mean that's a great idea if you want to relax and whatever but if it's if it's unless it's a really significant relationship you're building who cares about the free lunch you know meet them for coffee if you have to or if there's a real reason but otherwise have them send you their information and then when you have a need you jump in but spending an hour and a half for two hours on lunch uh, is a huge time saver so let's go to kind of the case study number two is is with the mistakes is treat, treating everybody like they're a one-off instead is templates and so one of the things that that I do is I break my events or projects or anything I'm consulting on because I don't just do events I break it into sort of three categories like what I call pre-production like what happens in the very beginning with the client and then what I call production like when we're in the thick of delivering the product or service and post-production I kind of look at them like buckets and I figure out what's in every single bucket and I know how much time I'm going to spend on the phone with the client to, to get all the details of their project and that is then how I price because I already know it's going to take me X amount of time to kind of put somebody in the system and the second mistake is not pre-planning so um, instead really identify that and by pre-planning I mean just getting off this call and sitting down and going okay what are all the steps in my process that's huge and then not course correcting and the course correcting part is saying to yourself hey listen how did I price my last two or three projects and did I price them correctly did I make a lot of money could I have made more where did I leave money on the table so it's sort of that strategic SWOT analysis so at the end of the day, I mentioned to you luxury, which we all want to live luxuriously. And it's like if you fix your pricing and you get more disposable income, then guess what? You have more time to do whatever you want, whether it's working on your business, not in it, you know, not feeling so rushed all the time, having time with your family and friends, not having to check your email every 10 seconds, whether you're on vacation or not, just not feeling that pull because you're making plenty of money and that to me is luxury that's what I want I want the luxury to to say yeah I can stay on vacation for three extra days because I don't have to go back and make money because I was really efficient before I left so hopefully so far we're not done yet and we're still gonna go over questions uh, is 
you know, would you guys agree that, that we've spent the time well so far? We've covered kind of those three big chunks. And we, we obviously can't cover every single thing that we need to, you know, in a, in a one-hour webinar. And if we told you, hey, listen, here's a seven-hour webinar, exactly nobody would sign up. Um, we're going to give you, for anybody who is like, oh, my God, I need more on this. I've got to, you know, fix this once and for all. We are going to tell you, before we do questions, how, um, how we can help you implement this stuff even more than we have right now. So hopefully we've given you some ideas about exactly what to do with your business, exactly what to put on your contract. And if not, and if, if you're serious and, and you want more, we're going to tell you how we can get more. And the, the biggest thing is that, you know, habits die hard. And, and I think one of the biggest mistakes that I made for so long was thinking that this stuff would fix itself. And it doesn't. And it, when I finally raised my hand and said, you know what, I need help, it felt so much better to fix things. It's like just anything is better when you've got somebody there to support you. And so that's what ultimately we heard our customers saying is they were like, well, this is great, but I need you to handle it or need you to do it. So this is kind of a hybrid. We're going to show you how you can do it some and we can do the others. But at the end of the day, you have to really be open to the change. You have to say, listen, I'm ready. I'm sick and tired of doing it the old way. And you have to decide. But then you also have to do it. So it's one thing to go, oh, yeah, I'm going to do that, and then not. Because when you make a decision and then start following through, it's like an object in motion stays in motion. And that's for a reason. It's like when you get up and work out, then the rest of your day kind of goes better. And that's sort of this piece. So you're already in motion. You're already on this webinar. So it's like now, you know, continue it and finish the results. So what we did was we, Angela and I took a ton of feedback from the last couple of webinars and our last coaching programs. And we had such amazing results with the girls with whom we worked. And we should give you testimonials. But it was so good because, like Angela gave the example of, saving $15,000 just by batching her photo shoots, it's, it's the same thing. So what we did was we put together, what do you guys struggle with? Well, how to get customers. You struggle with um, feeling overwhelmed and too much time. You struggle with getting your business to the next level, how to price. So we decided, okay, listen, how are we going to address all of that stuff as efficiently as we possibly can? Because we're only two people. We can't give everybody just massive one-on-one -on -one calls. So what we did was we put together a series of four videos and an audio. And we gave so that you can, and all those you can get right this second. So if you decide that you're like, yes, I need to get this done, we're going to give you a link. And you literally can download all this stuff right this second. So it's pretty cool. But we tell you simple tricks to basically maximize any kind of learning you do. So whether it's this stuff or, um, you know, how to master cooking, we're going to tell you, we give you this whole audio and we walk you through how to maximize things. And that's a $797 value right there. Then we give you a pricing video. We literally walk you through even more in depth, more on these points about easy ways to raise your prices without raising them. And that would be 897 bucks just by itself. So we say, OK, here's a deeper dive into more of what we were talking about today. And the cool thing is, is that you have access to these, um, these training videos for as long as you want. So you can watch them. You can show them to your team, to your assistant, to your partner. You can watch them, take notes, do the exercises, and then you can go back to them and do them again. It doesn't matter. You, you totally have access. So it's kind of cool because if you get off this and you're like, oh my god, I'm so supercharged and hyped up, I want to just start getting into it because that's like how I am. When I see something, I want it in one second and I want to just fix it. Then you can do that. And then the next thing is we did a whole video on trimming your expenses. Basically, again, simple ways to cut your costs, more ideas of how to cut them, how exactly to do that in your crazy day-to-day -day life. And then we came up with this little productivity video about how to put all this stuff together. So now if we're showing you what to put in your contract and we're showing you how to create the parameters and say to clients, this is when I'm available and this is when I'm not available and how not to lose customers, 
how do you, exactly how do you do it? And we literally walk you through step by step. It's hours and hours worth of, of videos. So we gave that, we said, okay, if you add all that up alone, that's $4,094, $4,000 plus, no question. And then we put together this, like, okay, how do you get all this put together? So you've got pricing, you've got cutting expenses, you've got getting more efficient. How do you put it all together and so that you can literally create the blueprint? But the feedback that we got was, hey, listen, you guys want somebody to hold your hand. And that's the part where, where Angela and I got stuck because it was like, oh, how can we hold their hands but still make it at a price that, you know, is reasonable for them? Because we don't want to charge you a million dollars and do all the work for you. We want you to be able to work on it whenever you want to work on it. So that's why we gave you the instant stuff. Then we we wanted to let you know, like, hey, listen, you know, Angela is, was just on Job or No Job on ABC Family and TLC Extreme I Do's and was featured in Success Magazine. I mean, I write for Entrepreneur. We've been in the Wall Street Journal, Huffington Post. I'm on Fox News for pricing and business. And I tell you that stuff just to tell you that at the end of the day, we do know what we're talking about. And you basically, with, with this kind of webinar or anything else, you've got, you have two choices, like we always do in life. Okay, go as cheap as possible, keep doing what you're doing, race to the bottom because you don't know how to do it any differently. Be totally frustrated. Have your husband ask you when this, you know, hobby of yours is going to turn into a business. That's my personal favorite. Probably why I don't have a husband at the moment. Um, or you can do something else, which is like decide I'm done with this dumbass way I used to do it. And but that takes a little bit more of of an investment. Now I make a case that it's going to cost you a lot less in the long run uh, than you know spending all the gazillions of dollars that we've spent doing it wrong. Why not just figure out in the beginning how to do it right? So I love this testimonial, Angela. Why don't you read it to us? Um, from Stacy, because it totally, I think, embodies you and what what it's like to work with you. Yeah, she she's so sweet. She said, Angela ranks the very top of the brightest, most passionate, and creative professionals in our industry. Her presentations have changed how I interact with people in both my personal and professional life, and quite literally, she has changed the way I do business. Her passion and enthusiasm during her presentations is nothing short of infectious, and her deep professional expertise shows. Well, and that's totally true, and just you and I just talking and talking to another coaching client, you know, I poached the whole pricing model for the weddings, and um, we have another one from Nicole Lachi who I, with whom I've worked for years, is amazing, and what we did was we did exactly what we're doing on this webinar. She and I did it together, and she booked four times as many clients in a month, and I said, well, how many clients is that? And it, it, it $1,200 an average client. It's forty-eight hundred dollars a month, and she said it was. She said I had one dip, and one month was a dip. So I was like, okay, well, whatever. Well, how long did it work? She's like, easily over eleven months. So if you times forty-eight hundred by eleven months, I don't know what is that, but it's, you know, more than fifty grand just because she tweaked how she did her pricing and where she was spending her time. And it really isn't any more complicated than that. So just as a recap, we give you this whole quick start, like walking you through not only how to use our stuff, but how, how to learn anything better. And then the whole pricing piece, the expense, how to cut expenses without noticing it, because if you notice it, that's no fun. And then the productivity, like how to batch your tasks, what to cut out, what to do. And then, then the whole piece on putting it all together. So those things are all instantly downloadable. You sign up, you get them right this second. You can watch them anytime you want. And practice, 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 show them to your team. You know, I would love it if you don't resell them, but um, other than that, you can do whatever you want. But then we decided, this goes to the part of, wait a second. So we wanted to help you guys and walk you through. So if you get off this call and you're like, oh, okay, I got the videos, I watched them, I'm still confused, what do I do? We said, okay, Angela, let's come up with two training days. So we've got these two live Q&A calls and where it is totally interactive. 
So what happens is we go through, let's say, a pricing piece, and we say, okay, do this, this, and this. Do this, this, and this. And then who's ever in the group gets to ask the questions, whatever they want, specifically about their businesses. And we're like live on the call. This isn't tape. Um, now, we don't, obviously, because we don't have a ton of time, you get two of these calls. Basically, we're thinking you guys will sign up and we'll probably do one like uh, next week, and then we'll do one in a couple weeks. And if, you're, if you can't be live, that's okay because you can just submit the questions and we'll answer them for you. But we don't have a ton of spots. So this is for the first 30 people only. You guys will know when you sign up if you got this bonus, okay? Because uh, if it's available, it'll be available if not. And that would be a thousand bucks just that alone because it really is tailored and it's extra time where you can say, hey, this is where I got stuck or what do I do if a client comes back to me and says they don't have this budget? Um, the second thing you get, again, this is an instant download too, is I literally give you my 100-page workbook of how I price, how I price right this second. And you can create as many pricing plans for as many businesses as you want or, or can possibly think of. And it literally is step-by-step, step, we hold your hand and walk you through. And that one is for the first 20 people only. Again, you'll know if you got it. And that's another grant. But we decided that if you wanted, because we know you want one-on-one -on -one time, we gave, Angela said she would do an intake call with people. So this is, the I think, the best thing. I call it therapy. But only 10 people get it. And so what happens is you sign up and you are taken to a questionnaire. And by the way, the questionnaire is worth a ton on its own and, and we ask you all this stuff about your ideal client, who is your best client, who is your worst, worst client. You complete that. It's all online. You can complete it right now if you want. And then you get a link to Angela's calendar and you just book your time with her. Um, but it's only for 10 people because obviously Angela is a busy girl, but it's just you and just Angela. So if you are, if this is one of those things where you're saying, I don't know who to ask, I need somebody to help me, this is your, your spot because you're not going to get it for this anymore. So basically, bottom line is, we're giving you seven thousand three hundred eighty-five bucks at least worth of stuff. So you get the quick start call. You get four videos on pricing, cutting your expenses, productivity, putting it all together. You get two live training calls. So next week, most likely, and then in a couple weeks again, you get my whole little workbook about how I price. It's like a hundred pages of literally worksheets and downloads. And then you get your therapy session with Angela. That's the best part. I think I need a therapy session with Angela. So how you can get it, um, I'm going to tell you in one second. But think of it this way. If all you booked was one client, so pretend Nicole who booked four clients a month, right, at $1,100 or $1,200 a client, it's five grand a month. If all you did was book one what would it be worth to you? And let's not forget that you can always go back to this stuff. Would it be worth five grand, ten grand? So that you can like finally feel confident about how you price. And then of course you build the relationship with Angela and me. So if, if later you're like, oh remember you told me this and I did it and it didn't work. What do I do? Or this is what they said. Well then we're there to help you. So other people paid us an absolute fortune and we've tried to figure out how can we give this to you and not have it be a fortune so that as many of you can possibly do it and we can help as many people as we can while still running our own businesses. And so I gave you the Nicole example of you know one client, let alone four, forty eight hundred bucks a month. So it'd be amazing if we gave it to you for two grand, for sure. But we want to reward people who are on this and especially who stayed on. That's what we're going to do, Your um, give you the special. So here's the URL. Remember, only 10 people get access to Angela's calendar. So once that's done, it's done. But it's uh, you go to unbouncepages.com, like bouncing ball, unbouncepages.com forward slash D-Y-H-R for double your hourly rate. So you go to unbouncepages.com forward slash D-Y-H-R. So in fact, if somebody would um, just put in the little chat thing, if 
that URL works, I would love it. You don't have to put the www, just put in um, unboundspages.com forward slash D-Y-H-R. And we're giving all of that to you for $9.97. And you can do a payment plan because we also heard that sometimes people are like, oh my God, I can't do that right now. So it's like, okay, no problem. You can pay three payments. Um, your first option is you do nothing, which is what most people will do. And then they'll be on the next webinar whining. Second option is you pony up the small investment, and, and which is great. But here's the, the like best part about this is, and we 100% mean this, we're going to give you your money back. So if you decide within 30 days, and we do not care if it's 29 days, 23 hours, 59 minutes, and you can ask anybody with whom I've ever worked, we will give you your money back. doesn't matter if you've had the meeting with Angela, if you're like, hey, forget it, this isn't what you said, no problem, we'll give you your money back. So if you want to, um, I'm not looking at my computer, but I would venture to say that some of those Angela spots are already gone. So if you want to sign up, you go to unboundspages.com forward slash D-Y-H-R. And so the real question, I think, is, is it worth gambling a few minutes of your time at least just to check it out? You don't have to do anything, but can you just check it out? Because even if, if what we've said, like, does half of what we say, um, it'll pay for itself in, in one client. So there's a ton of stuff that does pass you by, and by the way, it should, because there's a lot of garbage out there, and then there's stuff that shouldn't. So two people, one does nothing, one does a ton. So go to unbalancedpages.com slash DYHR. If you didn't sign up, it's probably because you, you know, oh, I don't have the money, I've got to check, I've got to, uh -uh, I've got no time. Well, you're going to have a lot more time once you check this out. So we are now going to start with questions. And um, so many times people think like, oh, I'm not, you know, anything special and I, I'm not good at business and I'm not good at numbers and I'm not good at communication. But at the end of the day, you can still hire a coach, and we are still happy and here to help you and would love to help you. So um, put your questions. Angela, can you see um, the questions in the chat? Uh, because I want you to jump in. Yeah. Okay. So let's see how... Okay, one quick thing. I want to put that. I'm going to just switch screens. Okay, so maybe if you, we can start with um, Yvonne. But basically, at the end of the day, it's just the excuses. So if we're doing chats. Click the click the button below, or just go to unboundspages.com forward slash dyhr. Change it all up and have access to us. So, Angela, let's go with the question from Yvonne. Can you tell me, let's see. Okay, let me read it to you. How do, how do you quote when the request is vague? Like a request for a party for 400, but they don't know if it'll be a family picnic or an evening fancy party. When it's vague like this, it's difficult to price out your time ahead of time and give them a realistic range of, of the cost. What would you say about that? Well, so again, when, when you have a client that's very vague, setting the expectation up front and saying, I... In order for me to be successful for you, our minimum is 40 hours, which is X amount of dollars, but we charge hourly and we're very efficient with our time. And so I feel sure that after those 40 hours, you will trust the fact that I am very efficient and you would not want to plan your party without me. So that that's... That's the biggest thing that has changed so much for us is when clients come to us, they don't know what they need, and I don't know what they need. They think they know what they need, and I tried to do custom quotes over and over, and then it always ended up being more because the more you're helping your client and the more you gain their trust, the more that they would rather just hand it over to you, and they're more comfortable paying you for your time. Right, and and the thing is, I think maybe Yvonne, that would help Yvonne is is just to, at the very least, you know, you just set a minimum, so you know that, I mean, we, none of us have ever worked on, let's say, it sounds like Yvonne, well, we know Yvonne's an event planner, but um, it you just know what is your base amount. So when I asked the client what's their budget and they didn't have a, a dollar amount, well, you and I have a trick for how to how to extract that from them, but you just say, okay, great, then our fees start at. X dollar amount. 
that's an easy way to, to weed people out. Now, Heather has a great question. She said, when you track your time for clients, are they able to see how much time you're spending on their wedding and you're moving along your planning process? Do you tell them how many hours you'll be spending on their wedding as part of your consultation? So I think that's awesome because uh, that's a terrific question. These are exactly the kind of questions that when we do the group Q&A calls, and especially when you have your one-on-one -on -one with Angela, it's exactly the kind of stuff we can, we can um, answer. But I do not, and Angela, you tell me, what we do is we set a, a framework. So we'll say, you know, our, we budget X amount of time for this piece, or we'll say on-site time for, you for, the, for your event will be 10 hours. So you'll get me with an assistant for 10 hours, and after that, it's our old. So in that case, of course, they know how much time we're going to spend, right? But otherwise, I'll give like a time budget. Like, hey, we're going to work on this for between this and this many hours. Um, and I think, Angela, you do it when, when you say you, you book an, a wedding, and then you'll say, okay, you get one full day, and tell them, tell them exactly how you do that, because I think it's super yeah. valuable. And then you tell them what they're going to cover, so what they're going to get at the end of that day. Yeah, so again, I tell clients they really need me for four things. The first thing is we like to spend an intense, fun day I call it a design day where we figure out food, logistics, all the big components of what the event's going to be. That's one. Then we get all the quotes together. The second is they need to know how to allocate and spend their money and what's important and what's not important. And we start to move forward with creating the budget and allocating what's most important to that client because it's different for everybody. Right. The third thing is the final meeting, 30 days before the event, after your RSVPs come in, and we meet with all the vendors and put the timeline of expectations together. And then typically, if it's a wedding, run in a rehearsal, and if it's an event, setting it up, usually we start the day before, and then execution. Outside of those four things, um, Allison does all the behind the scenes stuff with their schedules and their budget, and she's the amazing numbers girl where I focus more on the creative. Not that she's not creative, she's very creative, but she actually is good at that stuff. I can do that stuff, but I don't love doing that stuff. Right. So we really try to separate our roles and use our strengths where it's best utilized. I love that, and that's another way, and that's something we talk a lot about in the in the training sessions, and then certainly in the group ones, is is how to delegate certain things so that, like you didn't say you, you don't delegate meeting with the clients, Allison. She might be there, but you do the highest level tasks, and it goes to like then what can you sub the other stuff out to, like the typing of the proposals and things, and those are those are things that give you you an immediate. Um, bump in rate, right? Because you've just gotten more. Um, Andrea Lewis just said, can you repeat that? Yes, it will be recorded. Somebody asked. Um, somebody, okay, Tri Teresa Halbergs. Um, how do you find out what your competitors are charging for the same services? In the world of comparison shopping, how do you research and keep up and stay competitive? Well, I will be happy to tell you. How you do it is you pull the Coke and Pepsi route, which is you call up and you ask. You secret shop. Um, I have a lot of ways to do this. Some people have yelled at me tremendously. Um, I get it. Uh, but you can also just ask your competitors. You can. The nice thing about the group calls that we're going to be on as a group is we kind of attract this tribe of people who want to help each other. So the nice thing is is that you'll meet other people in the group that you can ask. But um, Angela, how Angela and I figured out is even though we're not in the same market, she and I talk about, hey, listen, how do you charge? And then I kind of just adjust accordingly. Or you, you call up and, and literally ask. I don't think there's anything wrong with finding out how much your com competitors charge. I, I wouldn't suggest ask them to go through a 40-page document, but just to get a feel for, do you charge this? Do you charge that? Because, hey, by the way, um, if they're good, which I'm assuming that's why you'd be calling them, you would want to know what they, their prices are because you're happy to refer them. That's the other way you can get them is you can call somebody and say, hey, listen, I'm getting a, a bunch of calls and I can't handle them. I'd love to refer them to you. Can you give me an idea of your rates and what does that include? 
And obviously, if somebody doesn't want to tell you, then obviously you're not going to refer them business. But um, that's a big, that's a big one. Now, somebody asked, does this work for every business? And it <laughs> thousand percent works. Like we are talking about, you know, event planning and in this piece, like just giving examples, just because that seems to be the examples that or the questions that people are raising and. It's a lot of what Angela and I do, but both of Angela and I consult for totally different kinds of companies. Like I consult with medical firms, as I mentioned, with um, laboratories, with construction and real estate. It works if you're a real estate um, advisor. Like so, it's not like you're going to be watching videos telling you how to run an event. It's not that way at all. You're watching videos that are basically trying to make you mindful of. Don't forget to track how much time you spend driving. Don't forget to track how much time you spend emailing and calling and texting. Don't forget this, this, and this. Because the idea is to give you these aha moments so you go, oh, yeah, okay, I don't want to forget that. Um, and I have another question. If you sign up, how do you know you're one of the first 10 people? Oh, you'll know. So it, if you sign up, You'll know when you sign up because you will sign up and the bonuses will still be on the page. If you weren't one, then the bonuses won't be on the page. So you'll sign up and then you'll get your downloads instantly or your, you get your access. It's like getting a little access to a club, like you get all your credentials. And then what happens is then you'll get a follow-up email, like when a couple minutes it gives you your credentials and then gives you access to all of your downloads and your training videos like right this minute. And then it'll give you um, your whole pricing thing right this minute and then it will give you the link to do your questionnaire and sign up with Angela. The questionnaire as I say is genius just in itself if we may say so and then we send you a follow-up email as soon as we know how many people got it for the program we send you a follow-up email about the training next week. Um, what if you're a planner but not a designer and only hire assistants for the day of? Can you still charge the same amount as planners that are wedding designers as well? That is a great question, Elizabeth. Okay, so um, Angel, why don't you take that one because we're going to run out of time. Well, again, if you're the designer, it's a completely different role if you're coming up with the design and selling the design and, ex and, and not so much execution, but there's a lot of planning that goes in behind, so I feel like the fee should be different because you're the one creating and communicating all the vendors to execute that design, and without the communication and the ideas, there's nothing to execute. And if it's someone that's just, you know, those, the, the team is very important that you put together on the day of to execute. What we do is we charge a fee, um, $30 an hour for each person that is needed from a labor perspective based on the design that we have to execute. So once I know a client's vision, I put together a proposal and let them know how many additional people are going to be needed from a labor standpoint. And one little tip I'll throw in there is if we have 10 hours to set up, I can probably do a, a pretty great design with 10 people. But if we have two hours to set up, I'm going to yeah. have to probably pay 50 or 60 people a day rate to come and set up in two hours and break down in an hour. So when you're looking at venue rates and a buyout, sometimes you save money on your labor if you just buy out the venue. Right. And um, Elizabeth's got kind of a follow-up question. So they still spend a year of time with the client, I ask, because most of my clients have a vision. And um, that's fine. Like, I think, Angela, in, in your model, um, you can still get paid the same amount for spending a year or, or condensing it within reason. The, the idea is that it's you're mapping out very clearly, and we really talk about this and drill down, like what is included in your proposal, what is not. You get very specific about this is included and this is what you're getting for this price. If you want this, we're happy to do it for you, but it, it charges extra. So if you, if you do spend a year with the client, especially in that case, you're just going to have to be very clear about what your contract includes, how many meetings in person and over the phone or Skype you're going to have, like what basically, what kind of access do they get? And that's one of the biggest things I see with lawsuits or anything else is, or unhappy customers is, it's a mismatch between what they got 
and what they thought they were going to get. So they thought, oh, I thought I was hiring you to handle everything, and you're like, dude, for 2500 bucks or whatever. And most people don't. They don't know our businesses, so they're not necessarily even trying to take advantage. They just don't know any better. So we have to be very clear in the very beginning about what they get. Um, so we're going to, in case we run out of time, somebody asked, what is the URL again? It's unbounce pages dot com forward slash D Y H R for double your hourly rate. So unboundspages.com forward slash D Y H R. So Miss Angela, any parting notes? We're so glad to present this and we were so glad we had such an amazing number of people sign up for this webinar. Glad it hit home. And we are now going to be doing them every month on pricing and productivity and clients and all this stuff that that you want to know about. So, so keep a listen and pay attention for the next one. But it's unboundspages.com forward slash D Y H R Angela. Parting words. I hope that this helped. And if there's anything that we can do further, let us know and be sure to sign up for the webinars in the future. They're going to be the fourth Tuesday at the same time every month. Yep. Can't wait. Okay, you guys. Unboundspages.com forward slash DYHR. Anybody who wanted to know, would we be sending out a recording? Yes, we will. You'll get the recording tomorrow. And um, what was the money back offer? The money back offer is you have 30 days from the time you order. If you don't like it, we will give you your money back. So that's about as risk-free as it gets because we are really sure you're going to love what you get. So 30 days. You can tell us you don't like it. You just got to, you know, do the stuff. You have to have your appointment with Angela. Go do your Q&A calls. And if you're not happy, bye-bye. We refund your credit card. Okay? So that's it, Angela. Thank you, thank you, thank you for taking the time. Thank you all for spending extra time with us and going through questions and being so willing to share and help each other out. And most importantly, congratulations on taking a really great step on upping your business. Okay, until next time, we will talk to you later. So sad to say goodbye. Okay, bye everybody. Bye. bye.